Hey guys, welcome back to Six Sister Stuff. Today I'm going to teach you how to convert your recipes into Instant Pot recipes. So I'm Kristen. I am the second oldest from SixSisterStuff.com. Now, over on Six Sister Stuff, we have over 3,000 recipes over there. But here on our YouTube channel, I mainly focus on Instant Pot, so every Monday you'll be getting a new Instant Pot recipe because they're a little more difficult, especially when you're starting out using your Instant Pot. Okay, so before we get started on all this, make sure that you subscribe to our channel and of course, push that little bell to get all the notifications every time I post. Especially if you're looking for Instant Pot recipes, every Monday around lunchtime, I'll be sharing a new Instant Pot recipe with you. So, that being said, let me tell you my nine tips on how to convert your recipes into Instant Pot recipes. Tip number one, I would highly suggest not putting dairy into your Instant Pot. That includes cream, milk, cream cheese, cheese, those kinds of things. If you do, sometimes they work out, but many times they curdle, which no one wants chunky cheese in their food. Let's just be honest about it. Now, if you have a recipe that calls for dairy, you can always add the dairy in at the end. So I have a recipe for potato soup and it calls for cream. So I cook all my soup like I would regularly, then I add my cream in at the end. Same with cheese, same with cream cheese. There's a lot of recipes that can work when you add the dairy in at the end. Number two, sometimes you need to change the recipe a little bit so it will actually fit in your Instant Pot. Now depending on the size of your Instant Pot, I know there's the three quart, mine is the six quart, and then there's also the eight quart. Sometimes you need to downsize your recipe because on this pot there's a fill line and it shows you where the max is. You don't ever want to hit that max. That's not a good thing. I always say go a few lines under, that's where you want to hit. If you have a soup where it contains a lot of soup, be sure that you cut that recipe in half so it will fit and cook properly in your Instant Pot. Now this is especially true when you're cooking pasta, rice, beans, anything that expands as you cook, you don't want it to expand over. Number three. Now, lots of recipes call for you need to saute your vegetables, you need to boil this first, you need to do that first. The good thing is the Instant Pot can do a lot of those things. My favorite is it can sear your meat. So all you have to do is push the saute button and then put your meat in either in a little bit of oil or whatever your recipe calls for and you can sear the meat right inside your Instant Pot. Then you can add everything else on top and cook it. Now this also goes for recipes that call for your onions, you have to brown your hamburger, you have to literally anything that you can do on your stove top in a normal pan, you can do inside your Instant Pot. Now number four, if you are just starting out learning how to do your Instant Pot, my biggest suggestion is find a liquidy recipe just so you can get the hang of things. Now if you're looking for some very beginning recipes, click that little button and you'll see all of my beginning Instant Pot recipes. If you're a little more advanced, there are some ways to cook food in the Instant Pot. You can check out my Instant Pot Plus tabs up there. You can put your food in a steamer or a springform pan and then you can cook your food that way. I have a few such as a cheesecake, a meatloaf, lasagna, those kinds of things. Use easy, slow cooker recipes when converting them into an Instant Pot. Now, if you are just starting out, that is one thing I highly suggest doing. Get one of your favorite slow cooker recipes that has a lot of liquid in it and cook it right inside your Instant Pot. That will be one of the best ways to start learning with your Instant Pot. Now, not all recipes are suitable for the Instant Pot. You have to make sure they have enough liquid. If they don't have enough liquid in there, it's not going to pressurize and it's not going to cook correctly. Now, one of the hardest things to get right is the cook time. Cook time is so different compared to the slow cooker. For example, when you're cooking chicken in the slow cooker, I like to cook it on low for six to eight hours. I can get the same type of chicken, I think it's better, in the Instant Pot and it only takes about 15 minutes in here. So that's kind of the hard part. You have to know what kind of food will cook in the Instant Pot well and how long it needs to cook for. So I've made it a little bit easier for you. I have created this little cheat sheet that I'm going to actually put a link in the description for you that will lead you to a post 
kind of explaining everything I've talked about here, but the cheat sheet is there so you can print it out. I like to stick mine on my wall because whenever I'm cooking, I need to know how long each recipe needs to cook for. So once you have how long your meat, and I think the most important thing is the meat. It depends on how long your meat needs to cook for, that's how long you need to cook your Instant Pot. If you're doing some sort of chicken soup, you put all your things in, your chicken soup, okay, chicken needs to go for 10 to 15 minutes, I'm gonna cook it for 10 minutes, and that's how long your Instant Pot needs to cook for. Now number seven, make sure to try and match up your ingredients. Now the secret to starting out with the Instant Pot is you want to find ingredients that kind of have the same cook time. If you're cooking a roast, which I've done before, you put it in there, you cook it for 60 minutes. Well, your vegetables don't need to cook that long. They can cook that long, but they're going to be very, very tender. So if you want them the perfect consistency, cook your pork roast first for about 55 minutes. When you're all done, you're going to put it to venting. So you'll vent it out. And then you're going to put your vegetables in, close it up, and cook your vegetables for five more minutes. Or if you're lazy like me, I love to just dump everything in, close it, cook it, and call it a day. Number eight, you have to determine how much liquid you need to use to put in your Instant Pot. If you put too much liquid, it's gonna be really runny. If you put not enough liquid, it's not gonna pressurize and it's not gonna cook correctly and you might be sitting there a while waiting for your food to cook. So my rule of thumb, if a recipe doesn't have a lot of liquid, I will use a half a cup to a cup of liquid, whether it's chicken broth, water, anything like that. If you have a recipe, say like spaghetti, where you're gonna need just a little bit of liquid because you have plenty of sauce in there, I would do a half a cup or less of water, chicken broth, any type of liquid. The hard part about that is the Instant Pot doesn't lose liquid because it's pressurized, all the liquid stays in the Instant Pot. So if you're gonna be adding water, be sure it's not going to kill the texture or just the taste of your recipe. Now, if you go to the link on sixsisterstuff.com, I'm gonna share with you examples that I've made. I've made sweet and sour meatballs, sweet and tangy meatballs, sticky chicken, and also honey garlic chicken. So I've done it on a few recipes. I've done it actually on a lot of recipes. Those are just the recipes I have available for you. Number nine, we're gonna talk about the Instant Pot pressure release. I get a lot of questions about, should I release it on its own? Should I do a quick release? What should I do? So this is my rule of thumb. If there's meat in there, I usually tend to let it release on its own for at least 10 minutes. It's okay if you need to do a quick release, if you're trying to get dinner out quickly. I do that all the time, I'll be honest. But in order to seal in your flavor, in your meat, I highly suggest letting it release on its own for a little bit. Things that you don't need to release on its own are rice, vegetables, things like that. So anything with meat, let it release on its own. Anything without meat, you can go ahead and quick release. Now, just beware with your quick release. Sometimes if you have things that are foamy, such as lots of potatoes, lots of beans, thick soup, it can spray out of your little knobs. So just keep a paper towel near, or you can do it quickly and try and release the pressure without getting all the mess. Don't get overwhelmed by everything I just told you. It's gonna be okay. So the best way to learn with your Instant Pot is really trial and error. Now, you just have to start. So if your Instant Pot is hidden away in a cabinet, you've only used it once or twice, or heaven forbid, still in its box, go take it out. Go look at some of my beginning Instant Pot recipes. They are so easy. And once you get going with your Instant Pot, you are going to love it, I can promise you. You will love it. Now, you might get a couple of bad recipes, especially when you're starting out. Don't let that discourage you. What you're gonna do is you get, you're finally gonna get one good recipe, you're gonna write that recipe down so you can make that one over and over. As time goes on, you'll understand your Instant Pot a little bit better and it will become a whole lot easier. Just don't give up. Well guys, that is all I have on converting my recipes into Instant Pot recipes. Be sure to go and click in the description. My little cheat sheet will show you all the times of what the food needs to cook for. That's gonna make your life a whole lot easier when you're converting your recipes. All right guys, thank you so much for joining me today. 
And thank you so much for all of your kind words and comments. You guys are the best, and I'm so glad that you are finding help in my Instant Pot recipes. Okay, see you later. Bye.